vaccine vaccination, we can have a more longer time. We call that, call that the base meso. The second one is the deep meso, the short term. Third one is the spray. But more, more, which one is more convenient or useful? Usually choice the deep, uh, deep meso means uh, two to five minutes for the immersion. Base maybe more than 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30, 30 minutes. But it's, this is not very uh, good uh, vaccination uh, meso because there's too much stress. Okay. And also, if we are we can avoid in the uh, the vaccine inactivate during the oral vaccination because due to the low pH in the stomach. So we can micro encapsulation to reduce the percentage of the inactivate or the vaccine during delivery by the uh, oral vaccination. Okay, this is one of some of the uh, operation. For instance, this is a uh, uh, immersion vaccination. Okay, uh, this, this is a uh, uh, injection by the IP. And sometimes we can mix the, with the feed. Uh, mix the feed is too small or too small. We can mix it with the feed vaccine. So comparison of the application method, we should mention three different delivery system. One is oral, second one is immersion, third one is injection. Comparison their application stress, effectiveness, duration, immunity, combination, antigen. Okay, for the application, I think oral very easy. And immersion, next. But injection should be take out the fish, so a little bit not convenient. Stress, oral is not too much stress. But injection have a stress. Effectively, effectiveness, efficacy. I think oral with low poor protection. Immerse next, but injection is very good protection. So why current why ninety five percent ninety five commercial vaccine in the global they apply in the uh, which by the IP injection, uh, IP injection. And uh, the protection of the duration also is more longer. Okay, they have three plus. Okay, oral is very poor, uh, short, short protection. So why we chose the uh, uh, IP injection to apply the vaccine in the aquaculture. They also, they also, they can produce a very good immune response, including the antibody production, human immunity, and uh, cellular immunity. And easy to combine the different antigen in the fish. Do you know how many vaccines they can mix together currently? And uh, they also still successfully. In, no in Norwegian industry, they can six in one, or seven in one means uh, use the six different kind of the antigen mixed together one shot that can protect the six disease but currently they have a seven in one means the one shot they can protect in the seven different kind of the uh, pathogen infection so it's quite a convenient similarly with you have a pet in your family you bring the your dog or cat go to the hospital to take a vaccination so Veterinaria will ask you, you are want to inject three in one, four in one, or two in one, because different uh, charge, different price. So how to determine the application method? We call it a vaccination window. So during the culture from the lobby to the market size, it's one shot or enough, or near the booster during the uh, different stage of the culture, depend on your vaccine protection, I should mention the protection of the duration after vaccination, right? Okay, the second one is the size of the fish. If too small size, maybe it's difficult to buy the IP injection. So you can choose the oral, oral vaccination or immersion vaccination as the primary vaccination. But after they going up to the five gram or 20 gram, you can IP injection to booster and make the good protection of the duration during the two shot vaccination. One shot in a small larvae stage 
we can use the immersion O by the auto. And after up to the younger fish or fingering, we can buy the injection. So it means uh, two shot, one one auto, one shot. Duration of the protection, for instance, uh, some disease only outbreak in the larvae stage or young stage. So vaccine protection maybe four, four months, six months is enough. But most of the disease is the infection in the from the larvae stage to the market size. So the protection of duration is very important. Type of the pathogen. Okay, if the bacteria infection or parasite infection or viral infection, immune response. If some poison, as you know, virus infection and the general bacteria infection, it's a different uh, immune response because virus cannot survive outside of the cell, right? So if the virus infection in the fish, you want to develop the vaccine, but better the new vaccine can induce the cellular immunity, means it could the cell activity, because cell activity is very important, because antibodies sometimes they cannot kill the virus. Okay, so the cell activity cell can kill the virus. So why? intracellular pathogen or virus infection used to be concerned their type of immune reaction, especially for the CMI cellular mediated immune response or immunity. Okay, it's a single product, all combine the difference, the vaccine together. It's a single vaccine, or two in one, or seven in one. Depend the price of the fingering. Like a salmon, it's very high price, right? So they can develop a vaccine. It's the, the, the farmer is waiting to accept the vaccination. But some of the fish, it's a little bit cheap, like a tilapia or some of the carp. Maybe the vaccine should be considered about the price. Otherwise, you no know, competition, no high potential. So the development of the fish vaccine usually have a two, 12 stage. The first stage, you should be understanding the disease information. Okay. The second one is the etiology of the disease. The third one is the calculation of the isolate. You should be confirmed what kind of the bacteria or virus infection in the fish. Okay. And understanding how the virus or bacteria induce the disease, we call that the pathogenicity and the pathogenesis. Challenge model, you want to, when you develop a vaccine, you should be also develop a challenge model. You want to buy the immersion vaccination or want to use the uh, uh, IP challenge. So after that, in vaccine production, and in laboratory, you should be a vaccination test. Before the vaccination efficacy test, you should have a safety test. If vaccine, they have a toxicity. For new injection, fish die, maybe many fish will be dead. So you should be check vaccine safety first and go to the laboratory vaccine uh, efficacy test and pre-license license marketing and a product introduced. Okay, introduction. So totally at least it take five to eight years in the R&D. So currently, so many signs involved to the COVID-19 for maybe they can uh, develop vaccine in the in the one and two years. Okay, let's go to the development of the evaluation vaccine against the Vivio Habia in Orange Spa Grouper. Grouper is one of the important uh, economic cultural spaces in. Taiwan, also in the Asia, in China, or in other Asian country. So I will follow in the introduction, material method, result, discussion, conclusion. Introduction. Okay, the grouper is an important candidate species for the intensive aquaculture. And also 
the meat of the belly testing. So it's high demanding in the market. High consumer demand and hardness in the cloudy environment because the intense culture usually uh, often outbreak the disease outbreak during the culture. And efficient of the feed consumption and rapid growth. Okay, as you know, environment is an important factor of the influence of fish culture. So water quality is very important, how to keep our quality in the good condition. But I think it's very difficult for the aquaculture part, right? Because of for, the, for the fish farmer part, they want to hope to have more fish harvest, more high benefit. So they hope they can have intense culture to increase the uh, fish number and the, okay, and the production time. So in the intense culture, under, under, under the intense culture, fish get a stress and the poor water quality, they will be have some disease outbreak. So what kind of the disease outbreak, especially in the bacterial disease in the grouper? So I think the first one is a vibrio. Second one is a streptal, okay? The third one is the pseudomonas or flower bacteria and other bacteria too. But more important is the vibrio and the streptococcus. So I give the your vaccine development model with the vibrio species. Okay, so intense culture will be trigger the disease outbreak, especially for the bacteria infection. We call it the uh, they have a they, there's a common problem. Why? Because the vivio is common bacteria in the pond water. Also, sometimes you can find the vivio in the fish intestine, like E. coli or salmonella in the human intestine too. So we call that sometimes called normal flora, or some of them have a pathogenic, depend on different serotype or the different isolate. So many need. The we will include in the we will have we will para hemolyticas we will algenolytica the major pathogen is the we will have is the near uh, near six, 60 to 7 percent the uh, bacteria isolation from the grouper is a uh, but Parahemolytic algae only maybe 10 to 20 percent, okay? But second bacteria also important uh, in the penis malame, plum or shrimp, okay? As you know, plum or shrimp, they have a disease outbreak, we call that the EMS, early mortality syndrome, or AHPND acute hematopoietic necrosis, it's infection by the uh, we will para hemolyticas. I think this is important in Asian country, especially in Thailand or Vietnam before. Okay, so we will is gonna gram negative bacteria, short load bacteria and ambiliquitas in the marine water, okay? And they cause the gastroenteritis. What is gastroenteritis? Means uh, inflammation. In the stomach or the intestine. So we call it the gastroenteritis. This disease outbreak in Taiwan in 1993 and 1995, 1998, also outbreak in USA. They also cause the deep ulcer, deep thermal ulcer or skin ulcer, cause high mortality or serious mortality. So why we need to develop a vaccine for the fish? So as you, as you, as you know, uh, how to improve the fish health, how to control the disease outbreak. I think the prevention is, is better than cure, right? Uh, prevention is better 
them cure. So how to prevent the disease outbreak? So we, we should be take attention to the feed nutrition. So we can eat some of the plant product, like the glucan. Or currently have some uh, feed company, they also uh, combine that with some of the probiotic. I think the probiotic is uh, also can, in, 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 can improve the uh, fish health, especially in the intest intestine con condition. Like we are drinking the yogurt, I think the yogurt is better than milk because yogurt, they have a containing the probiotic. So currently, probiotic, there's so many different brands of the probiotic produced, commercialized from the, so many different uh, company. So you should be choice the right probiotic for your fish, okay? So during the disease outbreak, sometimes you need to use the antibiotic. So, but antibiotic will be cause the drug resistant or residue in the meat. So it, it cause a public health issue. So currently in the Europe, there will be the antibiotic has been banned used in aquaculture in recent year. Okay. In Taiwan, currently also proposed strategy how to how to reduce the uh, medicine used in aquaculture part also is very important the next one is the vaccine i think the vaccine is the more efficacy and they can reduce antibiotic use okay they can sustainable they don't too much side effect so i think the vaccine or vaccine is commercialized is very important in near the future so vaccination is the best strategy to prevent the disease outbreak. So in theory, I want to introduce the two vaccine development in this talk. One is an inactivated vaccine. The second one is a recombinant vaccine. As you know, in the vaccine, the vaccine only maybe is not very uh, high efficacy. Protection duration maybe is not very longer. So usually the vaccine they have a mix with some of the we call it the agent. What is the agent? Agent they can enhance the vaccine efficacy in the fish or in domestic animal or in the human too. So agent in Latin word is help how to help enhance the vaccine efficacy. So currently, the French company, Cybic, they have a quite a successful vaccine, uh, agent uh, product. We call it the Montanid TM ISA 763ABG. This is a quite a good commercialized uh, um, vaccine development, uh, uh, so agent, so you can, this is not the mineral oil. This is a metabolic metabolic rubber agent containing the non oil mineral oil means uh, they can metabolize during the fish growing and disappear to the when fish to the market size. So it's very useful and uh, but little bit expensive the agent. So you you should be choice the uh, uh, the green is high high price it's more acceptable to use the uh, this agent the second one is the we call it the dna uh, agent cpg or dna is one of the one of the uh, fragment of the nucleotide okay so this nucleotide specific nucleotide sequence sequence we call it the motif the cover in the plasma can again is the some of the disease infection in the front down. Oh, again, it's a different uh, pathogen, like uh, the Maminiasis uh, abidas or Edbosiella tada. Oh, this agent, uh, they can enhance the uh, intestine immune response in the cobia too. Okay, cobia is one of the growth faster uh, fish species 
in the cage culture. Okay, so how to play the important role? For instance, uh, I wish to mention nutrition, they can uh, provide it a good uh, fish health and growth performance. And how to enhance the fish defense mechanism. Okay, what is the uh, interaction between the bacteria and the host adhesion also important. If bacteria cannot adhesion, cannot invent in, they cannot cause the disease. So how to adhesion, adhering is important. So each recognized uh, as a whole substance. So the outer membrane protein, outer membrane protein means uh, they're located in the bacteria cell membrane surface. So this membrane as as also it's an important factor. They can adhere in bacteria can adhere in use the outer membrane protein to the host means the fish. Okay, they can induce the protective immunity. They easily recognize as a foreign substance. They induce the protective immunity. So we chose the two different kinds of the outer membrane protein. One is the OMPK, wider distribution among the species of the Vivio Asia. We have mentioned before, they have a major pathogen, it's a Vivio Javier, right? Vivio Parahemolytica, Vivio Algenolytica. Okay, they all, most three of them, they have a outer membrane protein K. Okay, so what is the major function outer membrane protein K? It induces a good immune response in the grouper all the yellow cracker, their publication in the International Journal. How about OMPU? It's a recombinant and all the DNA, they quite a good immune response in the turbor. Okay, so why we chose the OMPK and OMPU as outer membrane protein to clone and uh, express in the protein, use the E. coli system and purify injecting to the fish to measure their immune response. So totally we have a, uh, so investigation virulence of the vivial Javier in grouper and uh, identify a good bacteria strain for the vaccine development. So how to select your vaccine candidate? You cannot just say I get one bacteria and I use this bacteria as the vaccine candidate. You should have a data bank from your stock. For instance, you have the same bacteria more than 10, 20, 50, or 40. And from the just selecting the one from your, from your stock strain. And see this strain is the best strain. They can coverage the difference uh, isolate from the uh, different county. Just mentioned before, from Bravijaya strain, all the Pare, all the Jakarta strain, okay? If they can cover three different kinds of the uh, county or city, maybe this this uh, strain it's it's the best. Okay, and develop and evaluate the immune response and the protective efficacy induce the viral emulsify the vivial Javier formalin kill vaccine. Okay, to develop and uh, evaluate the immune response and the protective efficacy induced by the vivial Javier. For the formalin cell containing the CPG ODN one six six eight DNA vaccine DNA agent, okay, develop and evaluate the immune response and the protective efficacy uh, induced by the recombinant vivio harvia outer membrane prote uh, protein vaccine. So, how to design the your the vaccine is very important. Okay, so. How to select your vaccine candidate? Use the high virulence strain, or the major serotype, or genotype, or phenotype. Phenotype means uh, how do they use the any uh, amino acid or use the sugar for the fermentation or the digestion? Or the genotype use use the they have a different virulence gene or not? Or they are the same different type? As you know, like E. Escherichia coli, they have a different virulence in the human, right? Like O one twice nine is very virulent to the human. So you should be you should be selecting the high virulence strain 
all the major strain as your vaccine candidate. We use the three different methods, like the use of formal and key vaccine in this experiment. After that, we also synthesize uh, uh, the agent. We call it the CPG, one of the uh, one, one of the oligo oligonucleotide. They can enhance the uh, fish vaccine efficacy. Okay. The last one we have selected the outer membrane protein because this outer membrane protein they can adhesion the cell surface in the fish, so they can in adhesion and invention to the cell cause the disease. If we have the develop this vaccine, they can prevent antibody can prevent the bacteria use this protein to adhesion or get into the emerge into the cell. So okay, can avoid the disease outbreak a high vaccine efficacy. So after three different kinds of the formulation of the vaccine formulation, we immunize to the fish, evaluating their vaccine efficacy. Okay, so the vaccine, but before do the vaccine efficacy, you should be also doing the vaccine safety or immune response or protect efficacy. Okay. Can I stop here and uh, take a 10 minute break? Yes, please, Professor. Okay, we, we take a 10 minute break and back after 10 minutes. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So maybe I invite all audiences on waiting, Professor Chen, back. Please uh, write your questions on the chat box on the right uh, side on your screen. And we all also have audiences from YouTube. I think it's, it's streaming, right? All February. Because of the classes is uh, limited, only hundred person, so uh, we also invite our guests that cannot in, in in this class via YouTube also. Yes, great. And maybe Prof. Mato for use the time. Uh, waiting, uh, Professor. Maybe. Can uh, give uh, something, maybe a lecture to the master students, or yeah. I don't know the information about the stream one program or the material today. Yeah, thank you. Hello. <coughs> yeah, I'll go back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kira, terima kasih, Bu Ella. Ini teman-teman. Yang pertama, saya kira materinya sangat advance dan penelitian-penelitian beliau terkait dengan vaksin ini luar biasa. Tahun kemarin beliau juga sudah menyampaikan uh, perkembangan penelitian beliau bersama dengan riset grup berbagai negara yang sudah diinformasikan tadi itu juga sudah disampaikan tahun kemarin dan ini sangat berbeda dengan yang diberikan tahun kemarin dan ini adalah betul-betul sesuai dengan permintaan kita. Uh, fish vaccine development. Saya kira uh, yang pertama saya minta teman-teman untuk Bapak Ibu sekalian uh, yang hadir di ruang ini untuk bisa memperhatikan cara baik dan luar biasa saya kira untuk proses uh, penelitian vaksin. Ini beberapa ada Bapak Ibu dosen, ada mahasiswa saya S3 yang kebetulan juga mengambil fish vaksin. Uh, Bu Olga saya kira ini pelajaran yang sangat baik. Bapak Ibu sekalian yang dari dosen di luar Yubi saya kira juga uh, bisa mengikuti perkembangan. Yang kedua saya mohon adik-adik sekalian uh, agar supaya lebih interaktif dan kemudian 
tereksplorasi keilmuan beliau saya kira jangan segan-segan untuk bisa menuliskan pertanyaan di chat yang sudah disediakan sesuai dengan yang diimbau oleh uh, tim organizing committee dan yang berikutnya saya kira ini <coughs> ada banyak topik-topik riset ya yang terakhir ini seperti di layar ini ini adalah experimental design beliau dan dalam konteks untuk keilmuan imunologi khususnya untuk proses pembuatan vaksin ini sudah sangat rinci ini sudah jadi uh, deskripsi untuk suatu penelitian untuk rencana konsep ya kerangka konsep jadi ada satu pendekatan yang khususnya untuk uh, penyakit yang berasal dari vibrio harvey ini yang uh, diisolasi dari grouper ya dari penyakit ikan kerapu dan kemudian dideskripsikan secara detail dengan berbagai macam pendekatan ada tiga pendekatan yang pertama dari ilmu syait efkasi kemudian efkasi dicampur dengan PCBG vaksin dan kemudian yang ketiga ada emulsified menggunakan UMB ya, vaksin dan saya kira ini sudah bisa jadi uh, bagian dari kerangka konsep bagi teman yang tertarik pada penelitian vaksin Oke, keren Prof, menarik ini ya. lagi ada kolaborasi ini long lasting ya, hopefully di long lasting collaboration Profesor ya, ya khususnya ya. perairan ini ya untuk ini sangat-sangat menarik betul, 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 satu lagi barangkali sesuai dengan presentasi beliau pada second slide tadi beliau menginformasikan tentang kolaborasi beliau dengan berbagai negara di Eropa, Kanada, USA, Jepang, Australia tadi ada sekitar lima negara yang terlibat dalam penelitian beliau dan <tuh> sekaligus saya informasikan di forum yang terhormat ini karena beliau juga sudah email saya beberapa minggu yang lalu untuk bisa menerima mahasiswa baik S2 atau S3 saat ini ada tiga orang mahasiswa, salah satu di antara namanya itu Ati. Ati itu dulu adalah S2 double degree dari uh, Fakultas Perikanan di sana. S1-nya bersama dengan dia, pas duanya bersama dengan dia, dan kemudian ditarik kembali untuk S3 dan dia mendapat beasiswa dari Prof. Jen. Dan saya kira uh, dia juga mengundang lagi untuk beberapa mahasiswa, beberapa uh, apa requirement ada di saya. Saya kira bagi yang tertarik boleh menghubungi saya nanti akan kita coba komunikasi lebih intens dengan beliau bersama. Jadi sekali lagi saya informasikan sesuai dengan presentasi beliau di slide kedua tadi beliau mengundang untuk bergabungnya teman-teman S2 dan S3 dan ada fundingnya dari project beliau dan saya kira untuk topik-topik yang sudah beliau sampaikan tadi fish pathology, kemudian immunology and fish vaccine dan saya kira Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam. Terima, ya. Terima kasih sekali ya. Saya saya tuh nggak 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 lepas lepas ngelihat presentasinya bagus sekali ya. Runut dia menjelaskan. Ya. Atau biasanya kan kalau uh, ini kalau kendalanya kalau dari negara sana bahasanya kurang jelas. Jadi kalau ya. minggu lalu itu saya ikutin tapi saya waktu kemarin minggu lalu memakai HP jadi HP-nya kadang-kadang hilang soalnya makanya saya minta apa namanya Mas Dailani kalau kalau boleh saya minta apa istilahnya bahan-bahan presentasi yang bisa saya pelajari lebih lanjut uh, kemudian ini juga saya uh, mau pelajari lebih lanjut kemudian kalau boleh kita bisa apa namanya komunikasinya lebih kalau beliau berkenan kita bisa email atau lewat apa di luar acara ini kemudian karena iya benar-benar dia cara ini itu apa kebapaan banget maksudnya apa itu mengayomi Ya. Jadi ya. bapak ya. Ya. Jadi, ya. ilmunya bisa diterima itu. Ya. Hmm. Sangat operasional Bu Dewi, sangat operasional. Ya. ya. Oh. Karena berbasis pada penelitian-penelitian beliau. Beliau sudah hadir ke UB tahun yang lalu dan oh. saya mendampingi beliau. Ternyata beliau luar biasa. Sampai pulang di Taiwan saja sudah keep kontak dengan saya dan terus menerus sampai sekarang. Ya dan termasuk Uh, permintaan mahasiswa saja minta ke saya dan kemarin kami laporkan ke Pak Dekan nanti mudah-mudahan segera kami bahwa siapa saja alumni S2 atau yang mau S3 atau yang kemudian oh, mau berkunjung oh. diri mau berkunjung kunjung, -kunjung. <laughs> <laughs> ya, 
ya mungkin tahun, tahun depan di invite aja Bu Anu kalau seandainya nanti kita undang lagi tahun depan kami ajak ke Bali boleh kita antarkan ke Gondol Bu Asik boleh ya. Ya. itu beliau sudah kayaknya sudah siap 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 okay. Moga Bu Ella matur nuwun Oke okay, matur nuwun Prof Abdu Oke. Okay. Yes, Professor Chen. Yeah, could we yeah. continue, please? Oke, okay, thank you. Oke, okay, let's let's uh, continue. Oke, okay, this slide showing we have a formulation the three different kind of the uh, vaccine here, right? So in the left, uh, in the left hand side, we can see here we emulsify the uh, formalin cell vaccine means after culture it activate with the formalin and the purification and then activate and should be checked the uh, uh, vaccine is safety or bacteria was killed by the formalin otherwise injection which will be there too okay so you should be have a safety test so after that you can uh, mix with uh, uh, some of the agent too we can call up before we call it dna agent agent have a different kind of agent right like the mineral oil non-mineral oil you can also one, use one of the uh, dna fragment as a uh, The third part is the outer membrane protein. Is uh, as I mentioned because the outer membrane protein is important. Low, they have uh, adhesion to the surface of the cell, and uh, up, uh, adhesion. The next step will be invention and penetration into the cell and cause the cell death. But if the this vaccine successfully, antibody will be prevent or prevent this protein during the bacterial infection to maintain the cell so they can cure the bacteria or avoid the bacteria in, in the uh, invention and the penetration so why we chose the outer membrane protein as you know mentioned we've been mentioned before in the norwegian industry they have developed quite a good success for the vaccine in the previous slide we could have frontulosis they also use the outer membrane protein Before they don't have outer membrane protein, vaccine efficacy is a little bit low. But after that, mix with outer membrane protein with the inductive pure vaccine, they can enhance the 20 to 30 percent of the vaccine efficacy. So it means that uh, outer membrane protein is important protein and a, a virulence factor too. Okay, so before you go into the vaccination, the fish, you should be have a vaccine, we call it a safety test. So if we should be injected a small amount of the fish to make sure all our fish not, don't have a side effect. After that, you can go to the next step to the vaccination efficacy and uh, check the antibody titer or immune response. Okay, to make sure they are protective efficacy. So how to prepare the uh, vaccine? In this slide, you can show we can show here preparation of the emulsified uh, we will have a vaccine. With the formalin cure, you can select the your vaccine candidate. But what kind of the criteria you chose your vaccine candidate according to the phenotype, genotype, serotype? After you analysis all the your stock strain from the, the isolate from the different the county, for instance, in the in Indonesia in different county, you have selected the 100 or 50 or 40 strain. You after you doing the phenotype genotype, serotype, you choose the one of the major major type they can cover in the major bacteria as the vaccine candidate. Okay, so after that you can culture and harvest bacteria here with the formalin, okay, and uh, check the sterilize the test and the formulation, immersion, and evaluation of the vaccine <clears throat> efficacy. So I had mentioned why the CPG, one of the agents, uh, we call it the CPG ODN, they can enhance the fish immunity because they can enhance the NK cell, natural killer cell activity. We call it the ADCC, means antibody dependent cell median cytotoxicity. Another one is the TH1 like adaptive immunity response. They can enhance the cytotoxic T cell lymphocyte, especially 
we mentioned before, if the bacteria or more all of the virus infection they in, in enter enter into the cell. So you want to develop antibody, you should be you should be have a TH1 immune response. Otherwise, the, otherwise the immune system cannot kill or clean the pathogen because it neither have a TH1. As you know, we divide the TH1 immune response, TH2 immune response. TH2 means the produce antibody. Okay, okay. TH1 is the adaptive immune response, enhance the cell phagocytic activity or killing activity. So divide the two parts. One is the human immunity. This one we call, we call that the cellular immune response. Okay, what is a PAMP? What is a PRR? Okay, PAMP means a pathogen associate molecule patent, like an outer membrane protein in the bacteria. PRR means the immune cell, like the antigen presenting cell. They have a receptor. They have a different receptor. We call it the PRR. Okay, like the, our our frame, our house or the dormitory. The door, they have a locker, right? When you are going home, you have a key. Okay, your key, look at the PAMP. Your key can open the door, the locker from your door and get into your house. So it means uh, this is like the locker, this is the key. Key means uh, mention that's the like the bacteria. They have a specific, okay? So they can, they can maintain the specific PR. So how many PR in the cell, in the immune cell? More than 20 different kinds of the PRR receptor. How many PAMP? So many different PAMP, or like the flagella, bacteria cell membrane, something like that. Okay, going to next, you can see the detail. Okay, in here, why we chose the CPG OTN as the agent? Because uh, this, this is the component bacteria. Oh, come on, bacteria or the virus infection, they have a CPG ODN2. They find the immune cell, we call it the antigen presenting cell. Antigen presenting cell, they have a TLR1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, maybe until 20, something like that. Okay, TLR9 is mounted specific with the CPG DNA. Okay, if flagellin for bacteria, they can find in TLR5. If the virus double strain RNA, mind the TLR3. So we hope we can in, induce the TLR9 receptor activity, can kill the bacteria to, in, to, to activate antigen presenting cell. So why we chose the CPG OD, DNA or ODN as the agent? Okay, so in here, preparation of the Vivio Javier formalin kill cell containing the CPG ODN. So in here, you can see. Uh, you, you can synthesize, okay, synthesize the one, uh, the, the ODN, and after that clone with a 50 copy, 30 copy, or 60 copy. Because if you are synthesize the 60 copy, very expensive. We synthesize only three copy. And after that, we can use the uh, cloning techn technology to make a more copy number. So we call that as 50 copy, 30 copy. Or 60 copy and mix it with the formalin kill cell. This was the uh, agent. This is the uh, vaccine candidate. So usually vaccine on, only they should be mixed some of the agent. I should mention agent is means the help. They can help the bacteria. Uh, uh, they can help the vaccine efficacy. Okay, the outer membrane protein is the pathogenic from the pathogenic vivio harvey. It comes from OMPK or OMPU, or we can use the technology as a linker to combine these two vaccine, um, uh, gene together. We call that a linker to these two genes as a Hushin protein. Hushin, uh, Hushin protein. It's the single, single gene expression protein, K or U. This gene it can produce these two protein together. So we construct in this pattern one by one. This is our uh, facility to vaccination and a challenge facility. Okay, so as we have mentioned before, you should be trying their vaccine safety first, right? So vaccine safety test, after not, 
it's a safety, pass the safety test, you can go to see the vaccination the fish. If you cannot pass the safety test, it means that they have some uh, toxin appearance in the vaccine. So you should be checked why the vaccine will kill the bacteria. So you cannot use this vaccine for vaccination. You pass the vaccine safety test, you're going to see the vaccine, you're going to the next for the vaccination the fish. So I, as I mentioned before, most of the vaccine, uh, I think 95% the commercial vaccine is uh, uh, has been applied by the IP injection. Okay. So after vaccination, how do you know your vaccine is efficacy or not? Is it good vaccine or poor? So you should check antibody titer, right? Because antibody is important uh, factor in immunoglobulin. They can neutralize the pathogen. Okay. So how to check antibody titer? We can use the ELISA or agglutination test. Okay. We can check use these two methods to measure the antibody titer. Does the antibody titer they have a correlated to the uh, protection or survival rate? And second part is the immune grade gene expression. What kind of gene expression do they have a correlated with the uh, uh, RPS protection or not? The, ne ne the next part uh, is the, we call it the bacterial side of effect. We can isolate, we can take a blood and isolate the serum, anti-serum and mix with the bacteria to make sure this, this antibody can kill the bacteria or reduce the bacteria number or not. So we can choose the antibody titer, immune reactive gene expression, and the bacteria cycle. The final one is the challenge. After challenge, which can survive? And survival rate is very high, means that your vaccine have high really potential, maybe can reach the commercialized stage. So how is the RPS? RPS is a, use this formula, uh, mortality of the vaccination fish divided by the mortality of the unvaccination control fish, multiple 100. In this formula, we call it the RPS, means a relative percentage survival. Okay, so microagglutination test, we got two whole dilution of the fish serum in the PBS, 80 to 50% of the inactive bacteria suspension use this concentration and gentle agitating the bread, incubating the bread at this temperature two hours and overnight in the four thousand to see if the result like this one is no agglutination. This one we call it the 40H of the well means antibody, we have antibody in here. Okay, so it's positive, it's negative. Yes, that linkage. Even though solvent acid, we call it ELISA. So you should be called a new antigen. And first antibody, your immune cell from the grouper. We vaccination the grouper, we can take a blood here, uh, take a serum, uh, isolation the serum from blood. And use the mouse anti-grouper monoclonal antibody. And the gold anti uh, mouse IgG conjugate with HRP as a third, as a second antibody. Okay, and use the substrate. You can see the some color here, so we call it the enzyme linker linked immunosolvent assay abbreviation ELISA. Okay, serum side uh, serum bacterial side activity culture bacteria and bring the uh, serum from the grouper and uh, mix together and one hour to check with the control and uh, mix with antibody uh, serum to comparison. Do they have a reduced bacterial number or kill the bacteria? We can see do they have a bacterial cytal assay, bacterial cytal activity. The next one is identification of recombinant protein, this bacteria autobiomembrane protein, uh, expression in the E. coli system. Okay. And the uh, RNA extraction in the cDNA preparation to measure the gene, immune red gene, do they have a correlation to the uh, survival rate or the vaccine efficacy? So use the same rule, okay? Result in the discussion, the first part, formal kill, the virus of the uh, vivo harvia in the grouper for the selection of the vaccine candidate. So how to select, we have so many strain here, right? After that, we chose the VH, this as a vaccine candidate, why? Because they have high mortality, they have high virulence. Also, it's a major type of the bacteria. So why we chose this bacteria as a, um, 
as a, as a, as a candidate. We should also have a robust strength for the challenge to see do they have a cross protection because the vaccine is come from this one, right? And after that, we use another strain challenge after vaccination the grouper. Do they have a protect, protection? Use the VH challenge and the VH or VH20 challenge. If both of them they have a uh, high survival rate, means they have a cross protection, it's the more high potential. Okay, so usually I should remind you, you want to uh, develop a vaccine, usually you select in the, uh, the vaccine candidate from your stock, right? But you should be reconfirmed, you all or isolate, it's your target bacteria. So you should be with a specific uh, PCR to make sure do they have a specific fragment. If not, you can confirm your bacteria is a uh, oyster. This study is a very heavy. So in here, we have called VH is number four, right? And uh, uh, nine five is a VH20. They have the same fragment. So they are uh, very heavy. But we go into the, we call it a past fuel gel electrophoresis. They are going to the epidemiology study tool. So you can see here the VH. Okay, VH in here and VH20 in here. They have a different pattern or chromosome. This is a reference train from the uh, gene bank. Okay, so uh, not gene bank, sorry, uh, the ATCC or VCRC. So they are the different genotype. So it means that they are the heterologous strain. Okay, the gene expression profile after immunization of the emulsifier with your vivo Javier. When we vaccination, we check the antibody, uh, we check the gene expression. This is IL, uh, this is IL1 beta. This is IL6, IL8, IL10. Okay, this, we, we take a sample from the uh, day one, day three, day five, day seven, week six, week 12. Okay, so we, you can see here, or iron beta or iron A, they have an increase in the vaccination group. They have a, they, they, they have a more high gene expression or iron beta and iron A. Okay, but for iron 6, iron 10, uh, only in the day one or day three, but iron 1 beta and iron A until day seven. So it means they can regulation the immune uh, gene uh, expression in the IL-1 beta, IL-6, IL-8, IL-10. So they have a correlated to the immune response. Uh, this one is a, a study uh, in the uh, in, in the sample is come from kidney, right? The next one, the sample is come from the spleen. They are the same day, okay? Take sample from the same uh, time schedule. And uh, this is uh, uh, IL-1, 6, a, 10, 2. So they also have a um, highly gene expression in the vaccination group compared to the control group in the G4 kind of the uh, gene expression. How about antibody title? This is the control group, right? Control group, no any antibody title. Vaccination group in the week two, week six, week eight, they use the ELISA test they have increased antibody titer. So it means that we will have a formal cure vaccine mixed uh, with the ISA agent. They can induce the significant higher antibody titer. Okay, how about the uh, uh, cumulative mortality? In the, this is vaccination group, no free state in the six week, at the six week. Uh, but uh, but uh, in the control group, they have more than 80% of the mortality. So it means the vaccine is quite good, okay? Because vaccination group, no any fish there from this figure. How about 12 weeks, nearly three months? They have a 5% to 10% fish day in the, in the vaccination group. But control group still have a 65% mortality. Okay, so it means uh, they put back, uh, the protection of the duration is more than three months. Okay, so you can see that here it's more e easy to see in the uh, six week, they have uh, the RPS, they got a duplicate uh, starting. They have 100% survival rate, relative percentage survival rate. 
average is 100, right? And control group in the uh, 12 week, they still have 91% uh, of the average the RPS. So it means that this vaccine is quite uh, successful uh, vaccination in the group. Okay, how about the bacteria side, bacteria invention in the group immunization with the emulsifier? Okay, you can you can see the bacteria in the control group of the challenge. There's so many bacteria, but in vaccine, vaccine, vaccine group, only very small amount of bacteria survival. But after 24 hours, no any bacteria uh, appears in the vaccination group, but still have uh, some bacteria in the eight, 48 hours. After 72 eight hours, in control and vaccinate good, no bacteria in, in the blood. What does this mean? Maybe the uh, bacteria, the survival fish can clean erotic bacteria, but some of, some of the fish already died in the three weeks. As you mentioned previously, because the fish always die in the second, first day and the second day. Okay, do they have a protection? We just mentioned if we use the heterogous strain, because vaccine strain is a uh, uh, VH. The local strain is the VH20, right? It's different, but different with the vaccine strain. But they still have a quite a good protection. This vaccination group mortality, maybe that's the 10%. And the vaccine uh, control group, they have a near 80% mortality. How about 12 week? Vaccination group is a five, maybe 5% 5 to 7%. Control group, they have a 45% mortality. Okay, going to the table, it's easy to see. Okay, so you can see here, control group 85, 77. Vaccination only 5%, 11%. Get average RPS is 85%. Even though in the uh, 12 week, at the robust strain, also have a 94%. So it means they have a cross protection. Okay, as you know, in the human disease, when you have a child or the even niece, the in the in the in, in near the three months or four months, you took them to the vaccination, the BCG vaccine. I think the BCG vaccine is prevent the tuberculosis in the human. But BCG vaccine, it, the bacteria is come from the bovine, right? Animal bovine, cattle or bovine. So they also they have a cross protection because the bacteria strain is come from bovine but they can protect the human disease outbreak. Okay, so this bacteria also can protect the different bacteria challenge. So we call that the cross protection. The immune response and effectiveness of the Vivio Harvia formalin kill cell vaccine containing the CPG agent. Okay, so we can see here, usually the vaccine agent, they have different agent, okay. So the agent, you can see here, agent sometimes cause the damage in the injecting muscle or in the odor. We call it the FCA full complete agent, full incomplete agent, MPL, ODN, CPG, or containing the CPG, or alumni hydroxide and control with the PBS or cyanide. So means uh, why the full com complete agent? Anybody know? What is the FCA? FCA means the mineral oil mixed with the mycobacteria. So we call it the FCA. It's only used in the laboratory study. You cannot use this one as a field trial. Okay. So why they cause a very good, uh, very severe damage because they contain the they contain the uh, mycobacteria mixed with the mineral oil. And this one only mineral oil. F FIA only mineral oil. No. Mycobacteria. Okay, we we mix with the CPG ODN is miles, uh, miles, uh, miles uh, in, uh, inflammation, not damage. So my not moderate the IP region, part of this. Okay, so alumni is hydroxide is low toxicity, no uh, very miles uh, side effect. Why we don't choose the uh, alumni hydroxide because the um, alumni hydroxide only induce uh, Humor immune response, antibody titer, they cannot uh, in, in, induce increase the cellular immunity. So why currently most of we choice the uh, mineral oil or some of the different kind of the element? 
Okay, CPG in here, we just mentioned, we think, we think size is a three copy, but after that, we use the uh, technology, we use the PET DN, uh, DNA 3.1, uh, clone the different copy of the CPG, like a 30 copy, 60 copy, as the agent to mix the, with the uh, vaccine, okay? So remember, it's a 30 copy, original from 3 copy to make the uh, multi-copy, okay? So this is the kidney gene expression following the immunization of the vivo harvia formalin kill cell containing the CPG, okay? So in the kidney, we take, we take a sample in the two week, and it's, uh, two week and six week, okay? And we measure the MHC1, 2, CDA, TLR9, TNF alpha, ILO10. So after uh, check the gene expression, they have uh, increased uh, gene expression in the MHC2 and also have a significant. They also increase the TLR9 gene expression. So why CPG ODN is increased the uh, uh, TLR9, as maybe I hope you understand, you know, TLR9 is a receptor, it's from the antigen presenting cell, like a macrophage, okay? So they have a receptor and binding with the CPG. So why TLR9 will be increased? Okay, this is the same sample from the spring, the time schedule, the similar, the same, okay? So they also have uh, increased uh, uh, TLR9 in the spring too of MHC2, okay? And the CDA activity. So it means that they increase the cell immunity too. How about antibody titer? Okay, 60 copy. Okay, I believe it, 60 copy. This is the 30 copy. This is the only, only plus me. This is the PBS only. Okay, so you can see here, 60 copy is better than 30 copy. Okay, so means the uh, CPG ODN, they can increase antibody titer uh, compared to the uh, vaccine only with the uh, uh, plasmi only. Uh, vaccine mixed with plasmi only. But this two is a uh, uh, vaccine uh, mixed with the P30 copy CPG. This is 60 copy CPG. So 60 copy CPG, they can increase uh, the antibody production compared to the 30 copy in the control group or PBS only. So protective efficacy of the vivo harvia formerly kill cell containing the CPG. So you can see here, this is 30 copy. The, mort the accumulated mortality is very low, right? Maybe only just the two, two to four percent. But for the 30 copy, maybe it's uh, more than 10 to 12. And the uh, vaccine with the plasma only, maybe 20 percent. But PBS mortality more than 65. So go to the table, uh, sorry, not table. Uh, so you can see here, you can click just here. So the 60 copy have a low mortality because accumulated mortality is too low. So it's a very good uh, vaccine formulation. How about, how about the bacteria concentration? Okay, in the 60 copy, very low bacteria concentration. In the 30 copy, next. But for the control group, it's so many bacteria in the blood. So it means uh, the 30 copy or 60 copy, they can reduce the bacteria concentration in the peripheral blood in the grouper. Okay, so how, how about the RPS? In the PBS, they have more than 60%, 65% mortality. Usually challenging group in the PBS should be more than 65. Okay, it's better to, to uh, say, get a, a proof of the concept, this vaccine is useful. Okay, so 60 copy, they have uh, get an average. RPS is 96. 30 copy is 79. Uh, vaccine is mixed with plasma only, not containing the CPG, it's uh, 59. So it means uh, 
the 60 copy or 30 copy, they can enhance the vaccine efficacy as a good agent in the vivian harvia vaccination in the in the grouper. Okay, last one is the immune response and effectively emulsify the vivian harvia recombination the outer membrane protein in vaccine. Okay, you can see here. Okay, if the gene uh, make sure the gene the, the gene fragment size is correct. This is the OMPK, OMPU, this is Qsin gene. So you should be make sure the size is correct. All send to for the sequencing to can confirm this is the correct sequence. After that, you can go into the uh, transform to the E. coli to the expression. So make sure the size is correct, okay? And go into the sequencing. Okay, after that, it's confirmed, no problem. You're going to the transform to the E. coli to expression your target gene. So that explains the three target gene very well. And after that, how do you know they are the immunogenicity? How is immunogenicity? Means the antibody, if the protein inject to the fish, they can bind in with this protein, antibody can bind in this protein. So we call it this protein have uh, immunogenicity. So you should be use the Western bro to confirm this protein is the immunogenicity, it is useful. Okay, and after purifying the gene, already confirmed they are the have uh, immunogenicity and the purified protein and inject mix mixed with the agent. It comes from French, Stepic, Stepic, uh, ISA763. Okay, this the uh, immune response after vaccination with the recombinant we will have a auto membrane protein vaccine. The IL1 beta, IL6, IL8, IL10 is from the kidney gene expression. So in the uh, ILK and the U protein, they have increased the uh, uh, gene expression. But the fusion protein, they increased a lot, okay, compared to the um, OMPK, OMPU only. So fusion protein, it can enhance the more high um, immune gene expression, especially in the IL-8 or IL-1 beta. How about the gene expression from the spleen? Also in here, you can see the IL-1 beta also, also increases significant compared to the different group. Okay, uh, in IL-6 or IL-8 or IL-10 also. How about the, the antibody title? So use the ELISA to measure, do they have produced a good antibody title or not? So from this table, you can see the PBS, uh, PBS, very low antibody title, okay? But in the vaccination group, they have a very good antibody title, especially OMPK or MAPU, the Hushin protein group. So Hushin protein, it's better than original uh, along only K or U. But even though, so even though in the ISA, they also increase the antibody title too. So this is the cumulative mortality. If the Hushin protein, they have the lowest mortality. The OMPK or U in the middle. But ISA still have a small amount of the protection because their argument also acti activated the cell function too. They cannot produce a specific antibody, but they can activate the, the immune cell activity. The PBS have more mortality, okay? So going to the table, you can see more clearly, you can see the RPS. In the Hushin protein, they have high RPS. And next is the uh, IMPL only. And the K, if ISA also have uh, 24 RPS. So sometimes when you submit the paper to the International Journal, especially the high impact factor, they also ask you to do the your agent only group to compare it to your vaccination group. Okay. Uh, this is uh, amino acid sequence, uh, amino acid uh, sequence identity between the different uh, vivio. We have mentioned before, vivio harvia is a major pathogen, right? And the second one is vivio parahemolytica and a permanent algenolytica. This three protein, this, this three protein amino acid sequence, uh, amino, um, amino acid sequence, do they have a similar? The OMP. K, they have uh, 80% mortality, 80% uh, identity. And OMPU also have a near 90 
percent uh, identity. So maybe they have a quite a high amino acid identity. So maybe they have a cross protection too. Okay, so this is the, their uh, 3D structure of the river Havia OMPK. This one is the OMPU 3D structure of the protein. So how, how do you confirm they have a cross uh, immunity? So in here, you can see here, this is the SDS page. This is OMPU, this is OMPK, this is OMPU. We use Western bro. This come from three different bacteria. Okay, this is from the V. Will Javier. This is from the V. Will Pala Hemolytica. This is come from the V. Will Algenolytica, auto membrane protein. Okay, so after that, we do in the SDS page and they use the Western bro to confirm this protein still have a cross reaction with the antibody come from the Vivio Javier. Okay, so this is very important uh, evidence to prove the concept. Maybe this auto membrane protein from the Javier, they can protect it, the uh, Vivio Parahemolytica infection or the Vivio Algenetica challenge. Okay, maybe they can ask the common um, universal protein have a good protection between the difference, the strength between the Javia, Parahemolytica, or the Vivio Javier, because they can reduce the bacterial number, also antibody titer, they also have a cross protection. Okay, let's go into the conclusion. This vaccine is a good candidate for the vaccine development. Emulsify the Vivio Javier formerly cure vaccine. They are successfully developed and evaluated. Induce the effective immune response and offer it a good protective efficacy. So usually, according to the uh, European country uh, layer regulation, usually the RPS should be higher than 65 percent. Otherwise, you cannot commercialize vaccine. But from our study, uh, three different vaccines they already uh, reached to the uh, more than higher than 65 percent. So we also technology transfer to the vaccine company in Taiwan. We hope they can uh, commercialize in near the future. Okay, if you are interesting, we have uh, three part of the experiment published in the International Journal. One is two is the in, uh, fish and the fish immunology. Okay, these two, one and two published in the International. The first part, a formerly inactive vaccine provided a good protection Again, it's the Vivio Javier infection in the group publication in the year 2017 in the fish and the immunology. Okay, second part is the effectiveness of the formalin cure vaccine containing the CPG ODN agent. Again, it's the Vivio Javier uh, published in the fish and the immunology in the year 2017 too. Okay, the third one is the uh, uh, enhance the immune response and effectiveness of the refined outer membrane protein vaccine. Again, it's a review of Javier in the group publication in the Journal of Fish Disease. So if you are interested, you're going to see the uh, PubMed website to search in these three uh, papers. You can get more detailed information if you are interested. Okay, I will stop here. I hope you can, uh, this uh, talk have a, uh, uh, Keep a good, good information. Thank you. Thank you for your great talk, Professor Chen. It's really nice works and very well explained. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow students, we are entering to the question and answer session right now. And before that, I would like to remind you to fill the attendance by clicking the class presents on the link in the chat box. And here, there are several questions already in chat box. And it will be performed in the screen by Ibu Febri. Febri, could you... Uh, the, the list of the questions. 
Okay, maybe we have a problem. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. Questions yet? Yeah. Yeah, or maybe uh, Professor Chen, could you read in the chat box? Yeah. Or I can read it for you, the questions. Sorry? Firstly, from, yeah, the questioners. Firstly, from, from Masita, it's a student. Um, she want to ask about vaccination methods. Uh -huh. So what is the best types of vaccination method for goldfish size less than 10 centimeter, Prof? Is it oral, injection, or immersion methods? Okay, if fish are more than 10 centimeter, I think it's good enough for the, by the uh, IP injection. Because in our, according to our experience, uh, fish, the body weight is more than 10 gram, or more than 10 centimeter, I think it's good enough. Uh, as you know, you are interesting, you can go into uh, see the uh, uh, YouTube. They have some of the vaccination video. They use the uh, IP, uh, uh, IP injection. I think, uh, I think nearby the 10 centimeter is good enough. But if you are worried about the uh, depend the fish, depend the fish, the uh, uh, condition. For instance, some of fish are very nervous, right? Like the milky fish, or some of the fish are very nervous. You need to take out. They are too much stress. So, how to better use the uh, uh, vaccination or the oral? Uh, but for the general, in general, I think uh, ten centimeters is good enough size for the vaccination by the IP. Yep. Okay, I hope, thank you. I hope you answer, answer your question. Yeah, I hope uh, Masita can answer your questions. Next, we continue to other questions, Professor, from Ida Ayu Tade Vimalaniti. So, her questions. Um, okay, there are some questions, I guess. First question, is there any possibility when the succeeded vaccine administered to feces in laboratory will be unsuccessfully administered to feces in real community? Maybe um, she means for the application in the community. And the second, okay, I will... Uh, I, can, I, can, I can hear very clearly. Can you repeat it or put in the okay. screen? Yes. Or maybe you can read uh, directly on the chat box, Professor? Uh, I, I try. Wait, 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 one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please take your time. Okay. Okay. Abu Febri, bisa dibuat agak full, Abu Febri. Ada ilami apa, Abu Febri? Oh, wow, wow. Okay, okay. I read it. Thank you so much. It's short. Okay, thank you. It's already yeah. performed, yes. Please. Okay, the second question, right? Uh, yes, is, uh, from Ida. Yeah. Possibility when the successfully vaccine the administration to the fish in the laboratory or unsuccessfully administration to the fish in the field? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a very good question. Okay. Uh, why? Usually, as you know, because uh, in a laboratory, in a laboratory, they are very clean and uh, clean the uh, water, right? And a good condition, good air, good oxygen, and a low uh, ammonia and a nitrate. And uh, but when you go in, when you are successful in the in the laboratory, why fail in the field trial in the fish farm? Because as you know, fish farm they have a quite a lot of the complexity of the environment, right? They have a very sometimes a very very high total bacteria concentration in the pond water. For instance, maybe more than ten to six or ten to 
uh, more than 10 to 6 or 10, 10 to 5 or 10 to 6 uh, CFU per ml. So why? And, uh, and, and the environment is, uh, we call that a poly pathogen. Because in the laboratory, the security system is very clean and, senile, and very good sanity and also very good hygiene and a very good water quality. So why move to the uh, fuel trial will be where? This sometimes happen. So usually you should be, so sometimes so you should be choice the more suitable fish farm for the fuel trial. Because the fish farm are also very important. It's the, it can um, have a good uh, a cooperation with us. Also is important too. Okay. Okay, the second question is uh, what is the factor of the influence uh, successfully uh, of the vaccine protection? I think uh, the one is, um, the, I think the major is uh, your vaccine component, okay? How to put a proliferation in your vaccine, as I mentioned before, okay, for instance, uh, how do you select your vaccine candidate from your, from your stock? So this is very good criteria. It's the first criteria. The second one is, uh, your vaccine concentration, your vaccine concentration. Usually, if the formalin key or vaccine, vaccine usually should be up to the 10 to 9 per ml. So when you deliver the vaccine to the fish, that a, uh, 0.1 ml means the uh, vaccine concentration is 10 to 8. So at least you should be injected 10 to 8 the vaccine concentration into the fish and induce a good immune response. Otherwise, it's less than 10 to 7. I think it's not good enough bacteria, uh, not enough vaccine concentration too. Okay, so the first criteria is uh, your candidate. The second one, you, your vaccine uh, uh, component, uh, concentration is good enough or not. I think the third one, uh, it's uh, your adjuvant. Today, how to choose your, your adjuvant? I think the adjuvant also in influence the your vaccine. Maybe it can increase your vaccine efficacy. The third question is uh, that the method of the oral. Okay, we have mentioned before. I think uh, oral vaccination is very, very convenient, right? And uh, very useful, but very poor protection. Why? Because uh, due to the uh, low, very low and low pH environment in the stomach, they can be used to inactivate your vaccine acti uh, activity. The second one is uh, oral. You don't know how much, how much of the vaccine you give to for each fish. So why the, the protection is quite a difference between the different group or different fish. One is the dose. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot get a, uh, the average dose to the fish. The second one is the vaccine will be inactivated in the stomach environment during the delivery by the oral vaccination. So usually it's a low antibody titer, low cell serum immunity. And uh, injection, I think the injection currently is, is more acceptable. Why? Because according to European uh, experience, all the Japanese uh, uh, in, in agriculture industry experience, I think IP injection, intraperitoneal injection, is the best choice to vaccinate the fish in current stage. Okay, for the uh, general vaccine. But if you are developed the DNA vaccine, you cannot inject by IP. You should be inject by the intramuscular, means the muscle. Because of muscle cell, they can express, they can expression the DNA vaccine it's quite successful compared to the IP. I hope this answer your question. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Now we continue to the third questions uh, from Fabric. Could you uh, change the slide, please? Okay, okay, the finger slide, yes. Yeah. Okay, I will read from the chat box. It's from Okay, from uh, 
Dr. Dewi. Dr. Dewi is uh, very curious with your uh, presentation. I very appreciate. So maybe we could invite her directly to ask you, Professor. Dr. Dewi, please, time is yours to ask. Me, Dewi Jahida. Yes, Bu Dewi Saida, Bu Dewi Saida, Bu Ngebu. Ah, yes. Professor Chen. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much for your great presentation. I just wonder so um, if you have any experience to uh, investigate the vaccines for virus in this, something like that. And then uh, uh, I just uh, just like to inform you that I, I graduated from James Cook University of Australia for my a master and PhD degree, and now I would like to learn in depth about developing vaccines for diseases in married fish using cell culture techniques. Uh, so uh, maybe sometimes can I uh, email you, please? Uh, I think that's all for, for now. Yeah, I can do it. The, the you, you are the uh, Dr. Oga, right? So means uh, the, the, okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so the question is, uh, what is the potential side effect uh, of the oral vaccination in fish, right? No, it's from uh, Dr. Dewi, number eight, the question number, number eight. eight. Yes. Oh, number eight. Yes, number eight. Dr. Dewi, number eight. Okay. Uh, I would like to find out if you develop vaccines for viruses in Mary? Mary's something like okay. that. Currently now, I uh, just uh, we have developed a vaccine for the coyo cow or a metal fish or okay. the herpes virus, but we don't have experience to develop the uh, vaccine for the viruses in the marine fish. All right. And then I just wondering how long did you take for you and your team to complete the whole research for investigating the vaccines for Vibrio in group? Because when I see that this long, long process, something like that, did you have? Did you find? any uh, challenges and how do you, did you cope with the challenges at that time something like that okay that's a good question as well i i have one of the slide we they have a like a three step for develop vaccine a three stage for develop vaccine right so usually you should take the five 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 years to develop vaccine that three paper is come from my phd uh, phd student uh, he is uh, he is come from the Vietnam, but currently he uh, he he doing the postdoc in the Canada. So he take the three year three uh, three and a half year to develop this vaccine. But we have continuing to go to the further. So I think in general, you want to in uh, in, in this situation, it would take three and five years. Right, right. And one last one last request. I. Uh mentioned before that uh, I would like to learn in depth about uh, developing vaccines for marine fish or any fish and using cell culture techniques. So could you please, um, I'm begging you to uh, share your email address or something so I can uh, communicate with you uh, beyond this program, something like that, if you don't mind. Okay, if you, you if you are interested, in, uh, I can, uh, Discussing with you, give you some information. Right, right. Are you are very welcome to contact with me in near the future. Right, thank you very much. Yeah, thank yes. you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Professor. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Professor and Dr. Devi. And next for the questioner from uh, Trinur Hadi. Please, Professor. Is it number, number six? six? Yes. Okay, what is the potential sign? I think the, the oral vaccination uh, only one, no, no, I think no side effect, but I have a stress. You wish we take a fish out, right? And put into the small, like a, like a small tank. So so in the small tank, they have a high uh, density. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. All, all, I think oral vaccination, no side effect, but just the poor, poor vaccine efficacy. Because the uh, oral vaccination, we just uh, put a vaccine in mixed with the wheat, right? And wheat in the fish. So I think uh, no side effect, no, no, no side effect, but get a poor protection. 
Is that is that okay? Thank you, Professor. Uh, yeah. That's answering. Yeah. Thank you. And a further question from uh, Indri Astuti, mm -hmm. number seven, Professor. Number seven. What is yeah. the method of the procedure for the RNA vaccine uh, virus? Uh, because I don't have experience related to this uh, this part, but I think uh, uh, depend uh, what, what kind of the type of the vaccine you want to depend for the RNA or RNA virus vaccine. For instance, uh, you want to use the we call that the uh, you you can use the you want, you want to use the uh, four cell we call that the whole virus inactivate by the some chemical. For instance, it should be a cell culture, right? Cell culture and mass production of your virus and inactivate, inactivate by the some chemical. So you can use the, we call that the, uh, like a formal kill or chemical inactivate, RNA vaccine. Or use, you use the, use the, some of the, you select you selected their important uh, gene. For instance, like the, you, you know all of the virus, we call that the rotavirus. Rotavirus infection in the salmon. We call that the infectious hematopoietic uh, necrosis. They they are the belong to the RNA virus, but they 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 one of the important gene. We call that the G protein. It comes from the G gene in the surface of the uh, virus. So they selecting the that one of the gene as a DNA vaccine, so they can produce the RNA DNA vaccine for your fish too. I just mentioned because the one of the commercial vaccine available has been applied in Canada for the salmon industry. They are the, they are the, uh, they are one of the any any type of vaccine, any type of virus, but they doing the uh, the the DNA expression, uh, the, the the vaccine quite successfully. So you should be finding some of the key immune a key gene or key protein as your vaccine candidate. So two types, one is a host, host cell virus vaccine, one is a your DNA vaccine or RNA vaccine, what kind of the, your major uh, gene, okay? Okay, thank you. And Pak Dailami, could we back to the second slide? There are more questions okay. uh, from no yes from Faridatun Amalia Hasana number three prof number three number three Farida from Faridatun Amalia okay Okay, that's a good question. Uh, means uh, that uh, agent is commercialized uh, in, uh, from a semi company in France, even though they are not the mineral oil, but they have a correct disconnected like mineral oil function because they can encapsulation mix with uh, encapsul encapsulation the antigen in the center and the slow release the antigen during the one month, two months, three months, something like that. So they are the quite a good, even though they are not mineral oil, but they are the, we call it the vegetable or oil, fish oil, fish oil agent, but they have a special formula, the, this, uh, this, this agent. So they have a very good uh, agent uh, effect. So currently it's the best, uh, I think currently it's the best uh, agent in the world, in the fish for the commercial vaccine is ISA. Little bit expensive, okay. The following is the how to win. Okay, I sh I'm not really clear the first question, but means uh, the ratio, right? How to put it, how, how, to, how, how to mix with antigen and uh, agent, how is the ratio, right? According according to the uh, according to the, the the company manufacturing, they suggest 
thirty percent your agent as uh, sorry seventy percent your antigen and thirty percent as agent means seven point seven three ratio. Okay, let me say that if we take an example from the second question in the our developed vaccine, we were a vaccine uh, in a group. If you don't if you don't mix with agent, the antigen will be uh, absorption and then metabolized uh, maybe in the two weeks is completely disappear. So if you mix the agent uh, is uh, water soluble, maybe they can maintain the one month. If the ISA agent, they can maintain, they can they can maintain the mix with your uh, uh, vaccine uh, more than three months. So means uh, they are slowing and slow slowing stimulation can keep the antibody tighter, more higher or longer. So the the agent is the one of the two. I think the agent have two function. One is, one is uh, extension, extension your uh, vaccine stimulation. The second one also activation your cell function. Okay. Is it answer your question? Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a bunch. Okay. Uh, we continue to the next question. If you don't mind, Professor, mm -hmm. we have uh, still five minutes. So maybe the four question from Iman. So Priyatna. You mean number four? Yes. Usually, when you want to uh, measure the immunogen, uh, I think it should be doing the real-time PCR, right? For the, uh, for, for the gene expression. And so, uh, but when you don't have a database, you can do it in the paper, in the, when, when, oh, for instance, okay, if your target fish is a grouper, you can search in, you can search in from the, uh, PubMed publication paper, they have shown the what kind of the gene as an immunogen in the your target species of fish. So you can choose the that gene as the candidate. So means, uh, for instance, like I run beta, TNF alpha, I think the most common, we call it the pro inflammatory cytokine. It's important cytokine too. They can, if they can increase after challenge, after vaccination, I think this vaccine uh, also it can increase the um, the vaccine efficacy too. Okay, another one which I mentioned, like the if your uh, pathogen is the infection in the intercellular, you should be measure like the CT hole or CTA a cell function because CT hole CTL it come from T cell, right? So you can search from the internet to see what kind of gene, what, what, what kind of the gene. Uh, you can choose the, and they have a standard protocol. Otherwise, you should be set up by yourself in the laboratory. For instance, you find a new fish, right? And nobody, nobody have started before. <laughs> it's challenging. So you should be, you, you should be, we call that the uh, NGS. Do you know NGS? NGS means uh, uh, new generation, new generation sequencing. You can, for instance, in vaccination your fish, we call we, you challenge your fish, you challenge group. Another one is a control group. And you can isolation the RNA in the first day after challenge. And it send and extraction RNA, measure the quality good enough. And after that, you can send out to the company. They are doing some of the uh, NGS, all the we call it the RNA tag, RNA tag. After that, they can give you so many information. And I think you can find the sum of the full gene or immunogen in your target species fish. So if you are interested, 
I, I just recommend you to read some of the paper. We call that the, um, we, 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 we call it proteomic. All the, I can, if you're interested, I can send some of the paper to you. You can read it. And uh, as your reference, if you have enough funding, maybe you can do this uh, quite similar work. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor. And maybe yeah. it will be the last question from Olga. Okay. Yeah, the last question for session. So please. Okay. Yes. Okay. How many doses of the wholesale vaccine? or protein for the fish size in the 10 to 10. Okay, in general, I just mentioned before, for the wholesale vaccine, your injection dose should be higher than 10 to 8. If less than 10 to 8, they induce not very good immune response. For instance, you go into the human vaccine or animal vaccine too. The general vaccine, your injected dose should be containing the 10 to 8 wholesale, okay, for the wholesale part. For protein part, uh, usually, I think it depends the difference uh, uh, target protein and uh, uh, bacteria or the virus. So usually it should be usually uh, 50 to 100 uh, microgram per fish. So you can read the, so many paper. They you, they always they, they come and use it 100 microgram per fish. 100 gram per fish for the protein part. Okay, for the wholesale, I think 10 to 8. Injected dose should contain the 10 to 8 wholesale bacteria. Okay, I hope it answers your question. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Uh, we still have questions, but I'm really, we are really sorry because the time is limited. So I have to stop this discussion session. For, for whom who wants to discuss further, please contact uh, Professor Chen by uh, send, uh, sending him an uh, email. Okay, right, thank you, Professor. Okay. Thank you to all of you. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Mahu. Yeah. Yes. You're uh, welcome, Professor. You're okay. welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Chen. And uh, he has already left the meeting. Yeah, yeah. But I'm get back for the MC, so I'm really sorry for MC. I'll be all up. Yeah, maybe we can continue to close this um, online lecture uh, even without him. Yeah. yeah, I give the uh, time back to you, Ms. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ms. Ella. Ladies and gentlemen, we are nearing the end of today's activities. Our topic for today is fish vaccine development. I sincerely hope that what we have learned from today's lecture will help us in our future projects and endeavors. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our guest lecture for the day. On behalf of the Masters of Aquaculture Study Program, thank you very much for joining us here this morning. It's been a great pleasure to host. Uh, thank you, Professor Maktu, Ms. Ella, Bu Febri, and Padailami for the chance to be an MC today. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thank you also for all participants today. Yes, thank you for all. Thank you. Good job, Bu Ella. The Alpiola, Padelami, Bu Febri. Terima kasih, Bapak Ibu sekalian. Luar biasa kuliah pada hari ini. Dan saya mau izin segera siap. Bu Dewi, Bu Dewi monggo. Nanti kita kirim email-email uh, beliau. Oke, okay. okay. Siap, pokoknya di follow up, luar biasa. Nanti kita yang tanggal 16 kita... bagaimana Pak? Yang untuk tanggal 16 jadi? Apa tanggal 16, ya, ya, jadi nanti kita segera infokan segera. Oke. Okay. Ya. Oke, okay. okay. baik. Terima kasih nanti segera saya info lebih lanjut email okay. email beliau Bu Dewi. Okay. 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 Terima kasih mau dicek Bapak Ibu sekalian karena mau takziah ke suaminya okay. Prof Dian. Okay. 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 Mata nuwun, okay. okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.